Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever and wherever you're listening to this. My name is Andreas Julek with Grace Healing. And again, today I have with me Larry. Hey, Larry, how are you doing? Good morning. I'm doing great. Good morning. So today we want to talk about fear and the opposite side, joy. Let's explore that topic a little bit. We talked a little bit about it. And, you know, we... And, and I don't really, it, my nature is that I don't want to talk about fear because, okay. you know, it can create fear just bringing it up. However, I think it's important just to explore what is fear. Okay. And in my mind, um, there's really two types of fears, the real one or imagined one. You know, the real fear could be, you know, when you're physically attacked and you either need to flee or or, you know, you have that fight or flight type of reaction. Yep. And that's maybe that's real happening in nature. Uh, but then there's the imagined fear that is fueled through all our interactions, you know, be it in relationships, expectations that we have set for ourselves or for others or for each other that can create a fearful reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, media, uh, anything that's presented to us through the media uh, can create fear. And there the result is that we may feel powerless or we may feel depressed, hopeless. And I think this is when we are recording this, it's October 2020. And we are in a time, I think, where there's a lot of changes happening on many levels which can create fearful situations. And I know that you see that, you talk to a lot of people and pray with them, right? And yes. you probably have seen maybe a rise of uh, people being concerned and fearful. How do we deal with fear? You know, how do we differentiate between what's real and what's not real so that we may stay healthy? Well, the thing we have to back up to, and Yarve al Malaykatesh and Kutaraviana, we surrender ourselves first unto God. And one of the things that you mentioned was there were two different types of fear that is the real or imagined. Um, but what happens is people have lost sight of the fact that there is one type of fear it is spiritual in nature. Yes, there are different ways that it manifests. Sometimes it manifests in an imagined potential of what could become or an imagined potential of what's unfolding beyond our sight. And then other times just in the specific circumstances that we're dealing with, like you said, we're, we're dealing with something right in front of us, car about to hit us or whatever. Something of the physical dynamic is evidencing potential threat to us. So we go into that fight or flight. But the reality is we have to come back to the root understanding that each of these things is spiritual in nature first. And if we go back to Yeshua's words, people have to remember that Yeshua did not mince words and did not limit his words. And when he brought forth words that said that every single thing of corruption that you witness upon this earth is first spiritual in nature, rising from the order of principalities, the spiritual realm. So when you say the opposite of fear, we also have to recognize that the opposite of fear is trust, faith. The gift of faith is already given in its totality. God has given it in absolute full strength. How we engage within that and trust determines its measurable result. So when somebody says, oh God, please give me more faith, you can't be given more faith. However, you can exercise the muscles associated with trust to embrace trust, to know that you know there is a God that is in charge. You know that there is a God that has already seen the outcome. And you know that there is a God that loves you dearly. And if you align with that God, you will move forward in such a way that will not be governed through fear, but it will be governed through trust, clarity, and wisdom. And even if the car is coming at you or a situation is rising that would ev evoke fear, you can release the spirit of fear, embrace the presence of God within its place and move through the situation without taking harm to your body. <clears throat> And that small discourse I just shared, that's what's happening in humanity is they've lost sight of the fact that this is first spiritual in nature. Fear is not some feeling or emotion or construct. It is literally something of a spiritual nature governing the nature of our actions. 
And there is so much that has gone on as we're watching the many things unfold within the government, the many things that are unfolding within the view of a pandemic and how people are getting sick. Most of what we're witnessing is coming from the order of principalities right now. We're watching institutions respond in fear, react in judgment. We're watching friends all of a sudden respond in fear, react in judgment. They're manifesting in the institutions what's in their hearts. So instead of embracing judgment toward those institutions, judgment towards the individual speaking, judgment towards a POTUS or a SCOTUS or something like that, people need to look within themselves to see what is stirring the fear within me, surrender into God presence, search for God, not the problem. In searching for God, you find all the things revealed to you that are in the way of you and God, like fear, depression, sadness, doubt, any of these insecurities that rise within people can be relinquished. The problem is busy, people are so busy in life today that they don't understand that you can take the moment, you can breathe and release these things and then embrace God within their place. And I've stated this many times with you and I in the interview format where Yeshua said that if you release anything of a spirit nature or of a demonic nature, again, he named these in two different forms. Spirit nature is the thing that influences me, the spirit of fear, the spirit of anxiety, the spirit of sadness, the spirit of depression or whatever. And then there's the demonic, which governs institutions. You witness fear rise within the institution of the CDC. You witness fear or judgment rise within the political parties or whatever, or manipulation or deception rising within the manipulation of the parties. These are things of a spiritual nature. But Yeshua said, if you release anything of a spirit nature or of a demonic nature, you must welcome the presence of God within this place or many of like kind will return. And this is what we're witnessing we're, we're witnessing like this snowball effect where one person gets a little bit of fearful and then the, another fear comes in and another fear, and then it just snowballs into this massive expression. And this is just the empowerment of the demonic within the institution governing inst individuals into a place of fear within themselves. Then if the person isn't releasing that fear, but they are working from within that fear, they will magnify it. And there's also people that are choosing, no, I'm not choosing to embrace that fear, but they don't sit in that living breath, even one single breath to recognize God within that place. Then they don't understand why they're all of a sudden teaching, I don't know, what, what's going on? And they have this sense of a fear banging at the back door kind of thing, but they have not relinquished the fear and then embraced God within this place. It's interesting, and yeah, and we talked about this topic so many times, but we yes. need, it needs to be repeated, and, and we all need to be reminded of it. <clears throat> what I find interesting is that we are almost addicted. It feels like we are addicted to, I'm going to call it drama, you know, which is a fear. It's a form of fear, in my opinion. Yep. We are addicted to it, and, you know, I'm looking at it from a perspective that, Fear is moving masses, right? Yeah. All the people, it could be a whole country, it could be a whole world, uh, but the solution is within ourselves, right? So exactly. every, every individual well, needs to do let's something. Look at what, you're, what you're talking about is something really important. Now let's go to it from a spiritual realm. Let's look at it, not from the human perspective. What are these humans doing? Okay. Let's look into the spiritual realm and remember that there is an ethereal form <clears throat> that holds no definition. All of a sudden, humanity embodies it at fear. It wishes to sustain its existence and sustain that living form. It doesn't want to be cast out. It wishes to magnify its nature. The only life essence it knows now <clears throat> from this ethereal state within the spiritual realm, and we look back from within the ethereal realm and we're seeing this spirit of fear take form, that spirit of fear is going to wish to protect its existence. It doesn't have self-awareness. It only 
knows it exists. It wishes to maintain its form as fear. So it's going to pro it's going to project greater fears into others so that it can magnify and increase its existence. So, and I don't want to lose people in the audience, but this is, this is like when I was taken through the covenant in love as God was forming the whole thing in me. And that came out over that seven days period in the book, describing the order and the, and the function of the heavens. I had this awareness enter into me that Yeshua was pressing through my mind, through my understanding, and through the fullness of my being, that this is why humanity walks on the periphery of divine power. They have lost sight of the order of the heavens, and they do not understand the nature of how they interact with one another. So if we as humans are recognizing fear within the institutions, we know it to be demonic, but it's also evidencing that which is within the heart of the people, because we understand the order of the heavens. The highest of all heavens is God's perfect perfection, absolutely beyond comprehension within our human veil. Then there's the order of principalities, what would be described as the second heaven or the belly of the dead. And in the lower heaven, all things we see or measure with our eyes. So what's happening is from the order of principalities, there is an ethereal form that holds no definition until we humans name it. When we name it within ourselves, we are the responsible party for allowing fear to exist. So when you say the drama rising, whether our friends are doing something on Facebook and that I, I have some friends that I see every once in a while because I use Facebook as a tool for people to reach out to me. But every once in a while, I see people caught up in the drama and they are becoming so hysterical in their comments. And if you look down through the comments, you see the hysteria come to a point where they're no longer on the first dialogue, but they're merely tearing one another apart. There's nothing of value transpiring within it because each person took upon it through offense. Instead of saying, okay, what exactly is this post revealing from within me? What is stirring within me? Why did it anger me? God, I seek you first. I release the anger. I release the fear. I release the judgment. I release the manipulation. I release the desire to be seen through the drama that's unfolding. And I embrace your holy presence to look upon these words in truth. And what I've found is if I'm releasing everything within myself that is not of God and is coming from the order of principalities, the spiritual realm, what happens is I'm usually given wisdom in a word or a comment. And if I'm led to, many times I'm not led to do it, I'm led to do it in prayer. But there's times where I'm led to speak and type a comment into a friend's thread and the whole conversation ends. It's like a mic drop moment as they call it nowadays because it directs the person back to Oh my God, wait a minute, I'm fueling this. I'm doing, and it redirects the person back to what's going on within them and how are you fueling this? That's the beginning of the interactive process of how do we work with one another to restore the divine instead of feed the demonic or feed the spiritual realm. Mm. That's really interesting. Uh, this Facebook experience that you just described, I, I have that as well. I come across a lot of discussions where I just leave immediately, or yep. I may read, trying to find out what is fueling it. What, yep. And then sometimes I'm led to post something. And that is almost a, a sort of activism, isn't it? I mean, we humans, we always want to do something about it, right? We want to maybe deal ourselves into a situation with a good intention to change it. Yep. change the direction of a discussion and in a way that's what but if you haven't done the spiritual work first you're merely going to feed the demonic ah. see that's that's the key like andreas as he's looking at the facebook feed if you jump in and the thought process going geez how can i change this you're going to feed it if Andreas sits there yada i thank you and i release all things that stirs in me uh lack of understanding spiritual doubt misunderstanding, confusion. I relinquish all these things to seek the very presence of your spirit. Yahweh's presence will rise into your fingertips and you will begin to type a response that will come in such a way that will be the mic drop. It won't fuel the demonic. 
But if you enter in, hey, guys, I need to be updated. What's really going on here? I'm losing sight of where the conversation is. Boom, you'll be a ju judged and jumped on and yelled and screamed at by people from all comments because they think, well, you aren't hearing me. Why don't you go back and read the previous comment? What, blah, 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 blah. Didn't you read the, blah, blah, blah. didn't you read what they, and it just becomes the fura of the demonic manifesting through that body of people that are now contained within that thread. So you actually have moved from the spirit influence, meaning small s spiritual influence, not the capital S God spirit, but small spiritual influence that you've magnified into an institutional body of this communication thread of those people that are in agreement with one another or disagreement. Because divine is agreement. Creator is unity. If we're seeing something of that, other than that, rising on the screen, we have to relinquish the offense that we hold or the total incredulity that we witness as like, wow, did they just say that? <laughs> we got to get rid of these things within ourselves and then become that which is God in order to respond in appropriate ways. It appears to me that uh, we, in a previous discussion, you and I talked about the gap, right? Yes. You know, that, that space between the stimulus, the drama, when it starts, a discussion that is creating uh, some kind of a, 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 a demonic environment, and then the response. And that gap in between is that spiritual discernment, prayer time. Exactly. And, but, and, and the gap can also become the working time. It can become that place of release. Mm-hmm. It can become that place that I need to release confusion. I need to release frustration. I need to release um, anything, manipulation that I'm witnessing that's rising from within myself. Then I'm empowered in such a way that I can pray for each person I witness on the thread or in the relationship or relational interaction that I'm experiencing. I can pray freedom and release from the things that I'm witnessing that they're evidencing. But if I don't relinquish them from within myself, I'm of no use in the spiritual process. I will perpetuate the spiritual process, not magnify the spiritual release. So you're right that that gap moment is one of the most important things. Is how did we internalize God or did we internalize the spiritual things we're witnessing? If we can practice that, I think, you know, consciously, and maybe it's even easier to practice it when we are two talking about a marriage for example exactly. since i work with a lot of couples before i marry them we talk about releasing you know th things yep. and, and building that trust mm -hmm. um, but maybe we can explore that a little bit for a, a marital union how can a couple practice that gap i'm gonna call, i'm gonna call it the gap theory or for lack of a better word but how I have can some we practice? wonderful people that I've worked with in the, in the spiritual release process that have really gained a clear understanding of that. Where every once in a while I'll, I'll get a couple and, and one of the couple might reach out and say, oh, please join me in prayer to release my egoic responses. Thank you as you stand in prayer. Now, they didn't give details, but you know what's happened. Something has risen that this person had the clarity to say, wait a minute. Something's happening that would make me defensive. Something's happening that would make me respond in offense to something. And that's one thing I witnessed. When you say, how would a person function within a marriage union? I would have to extend that to any covenant. A covenant could be a covenant of friendship, a covenant of marriage, a covenant between a worker and an employer, a covenant between an employee and an employer, um, so the, the reality is this has to extend to every relational encounter. How do we treat our pets? We come in and we find the place destroyed. Do we look upon them in love to release first the anger, the frustration, the hostility and the aggression and somehow offensiveness that our pet actually offended us in destroying our house after we worked so hard to get it clean? How foolish is that? But the reality is that's what's transpiring within people because the spirit form within them is only functioning with the level of intelligence the human gives it. So if it only knows it to be the spirit of fear, it'll only function as fear. If it only knows itself to be the spirit of confusion, it will only function as confusion. 
So we have to look to our partner in the relational interaction, whether it's our friend, our bride, our groom, our sister, our brother, our employer, we have to look to them, not what are they doing to me, but what are they revealing for me? What are they revealing that's going on within themselves? And what are they revealing that I may have done that may have sparked or increased this response? So again, it comes back to seek God first, that gap moment, you must embrace the presence of God in order to touch the attributes of divinity. In that moment, that gap moment, you will touch upon the presence of God and God will reveal to you all the things that are in you, spirit of offense, aggression, hostility, for whatever is unfolding here. And now set aside my desire to be recognized in this conversation and say, okay, what does God desire of me? What is my spouse revealing to me? Become the active listener, the person that is sitting there, not saying, what has my spouse done wrong? But what is God revealing to me in order to help my spouse? Spouse stands around and says, oh, I just had sex with another woman. A person sitting there could take offense to that or honestly search to discover what is going on within them spiritually and find absolute freedom from that if they would bring healing to it. If the person was able to see why this woman needed to have sex with another woman or why this man needed to have sex with another woman, all of a sudden they're discovering where the lack is within their relationship. They pray freedom and release from any offense, freedom and release from any spiritual infidelity. And then they embrace one another to bring holy healing into this ground because as they release the things of a spiritual nature, they choose to bring God within this place so many of like kind don't return. The problem is most of these relationships, something like that extreme rises up in a relationship and they end up beating the living daylights out of each other. Where then it moves into divorce and another person moves on to the relationship and there's been no healing and they perpetuate the same behaviors, spiritual in nature within them in the next relationship because they haven't been gifted the opportunity to see it relinquished into newness of life. So the release process we teach with Embrace Healing is the importance of recognizing that every single thing that rises up in front of you, whether it's a new POTUS that's being voted into office or a present POTUS that's being voted into extended his time and service or whatever, it is all about what are you doing to give freedom to the spiritual things within yourself and to speak life into these circumstances based upon the change that has transpired within you once you are freed from the spiritual influence and moved based upon God, not the emotion or reactive nature of the spiritual things that are rising. This is fantastic. To me, this is, has a very calming effect. You know, I think differently about fear now. Awesome. Uh, we talked about it before, but I feel different. And what I learned in our discussion today, I jotted down some notes here. Everything is, uh, is, everything is spiritual in nature first, so that the fear is not coming from a person, you know, exactly. doing something to me. And what I really found interesting, too, is the imagined potential outcome. You know, in the example of where you talked about the man having an affair with another woman, yeah. that in her mind she is thinking about a potential outcome. Oh my God, we're going to get divorced. He doesn't love me anymore. That is imagined, yeah. right? Exactly. That's if I understood that correctly. So by going through that gap process and that releasing that you described, we'll be finally able to be governed by trust, clarity, and wisdom. That's yeah. the goal. Yeah. And then the fear will be gone or released. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. Good. Um, I, we are coming to the end of our, our time together today. Yes. Do you, did you want to say something else before? we? Uh, no, on? I think, I mean, you, you've covered it beautifully. I mean, I just, I, I would suggest to people, please, in, in the closing, like one of the things that you've done many times in our interview process is coming back to the three simple things. And I think your approach, the last few times we've been in the interview process of, of identifying this gap moment that gap to response, honestly, truthfully within your hearts, even make a commitment right now. Say, God, you have become the filler of that gap. You are the one. I choose to place God within the gap. 
and breathe upon that, whether it takes you one breath or 21 breaths, honestly sit until you honestly with integrity to yourself, okay, it is God within this, this gap, this moment. And allow yourself that place to, once you touch upon the presence of God, shift to the recognition, okay, what is lesser within me first? Not what's wrong in the situation. What is lesser in me? How am I being stirred? Am I confused? Am I frustrated? Am I angered? Am I depressed? Am I sad or whatever? And honestly, gift this moment back to God and say, God, I give to you these lost entities, these, these things that function on a spiritual level. And if you encounter 7, 12, 47 different spiritual influences, give them life. Honestly, understand that you are not here to just be a human. You are here to participate in the process of renewal and the restoration of the heavens. And there are those that are lost within the ethereal realm, the spiritual order, the spiritual realm, the order of principalities that need to be restored into life. And the only way they can be restored into life is to descend into this heaven and return into God's loving and presence. And that only way that can happen is through you. You can either hold them prisoner as captives within yourself, or you can choose the higher offering, which is the gap moment of God. God, I return these unto you. When you have done that, one and two, the gap moment of God, releasing all things from within myself, all spiritual captives into God's loving embrace. Then number three, I become effectual in the spiritual process for the institutions that I'm witnessing or the individuals that I'm witnessing. If you can do those simple three things, let the gap become filled by God's presence, do the spiritual release and gift life to every captive you know within you, then be positioned according to God for the use of his spirit to bring change to the things you witness. That's what I see for us in the final three words. Wonderful. And to you listeners, please visit our website gracehealing.org we have also introduced on there right now a very easy way for you to subscribe to our newsletter which is basically announcements that we send out about our meditation a group call that we do on wednesday nights and uh, the videos that we send out uh, one or two a week uh, gracehealing.video is our direct link to the youtube channel as well where you can find many many other resources uh, to to dig in and learn and enjoy. So it was a good time again, Larry. Thank you for your time. Thank you listeners for listening in. And we will see you and hear each other again next uh, week. God's blessings upon you. Take blessings care. to all. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Yeah.